I'm Nancy Smith Maddox from WYTV7 in Charlotte, North Carolina, broadcasting today from Little Rock, Arkansas, and also Menifee, California. I'm so excited to be back. We're starting our new season in September, and I'm with Shine Your Light Radio Ministry, and we're just going to have a great time today. We have a beautiful guest, and I'd just like to remind everyone that we uh, are a nonprofit to WYTV7, so any seed that you can plant in WYTV7 would be magnificent. Uh, $5 goes a long way to promote our shows, so thank you so much for that. Without further ado, let's get started. We have a... Um, an interesting interview today that I'm so excited to have. I think y'all are going to glean a whole lot from it. Um, her name is um, Minister uh, I. B. Sharp, and she is from Menifee, Menifee, California. And we're blessed to have her today. We have a quite a big time difference, so she's up really early. But uh, anyway, <laughs> she is a published author of a book about leadership. The name of her book is um, Leadership and Leadership, I mean Leaders and Leadership, What Does That Look Like? So I think you're going to learn a lot from this today. She is also a minister of the gospel and she has a um, an LLC called Lead Your Ship Life Coaching that she's founded. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, uh, Pastor Sharp. You talk in the prefix of the book a little bit about how, uh, the, what are the characteristics of, um, of a leader, and you say it's integrity, commitment, and love. Will you elaborate a little on that? Because I'm not sure that people really, that I know they think integrity and commitment is part of leadership, but I'm not sure where the love comes in, although I'm a love child myself, so I, I do love <laughs> that. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I feel that if a, if a minister, if you're going to lead people, you got to be able to love them. You got to be able to love them all in the midst of their stuff, in the midst of them not having stuff. You just got to love. And if people don't feel loved, um, how, how, can you, how can you serve them? And so I find a lot of times I find, I've seen pastors that are not um, touchable. They're not reachable. They have these armor bearers that, you know, stand guard, you know, like, you know, if you touch them, something's going to get on them or, you know, they just don't have a connection with the people that they serve. And so for me, love is huge. If you can't love them, you can't lead them. Absolutely. That, that's really, that is really so true. Uh, you talk a little bit of in your bio uh, to me about some issues that you had with uh, pastors and churches and things like that that brought you to, to write this book. First, I want to find out a little bit about your testimony and where you got where you are. Where did you, um, how did you get to California and what brought you to the point where you had to write a book on leadership? Well, I came to California initially with my husband, Brian. He is a 24 year Marine. He retired in 2000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thank him too. He retired in 2004 and we came to California from Charlotte um, in 1995. He got, he was stationed out here. And so once we got out here, we found a church after we found a church and he retired, we homesteaded because it was like, where are we going to go? We have a church, you know, we like the community and we moved to Oceanside, California, where we served under uh, Apostle Barry Cook at um, Ambassador Family Church. And we served there and... Um, from there, just being in leadership, um, it started a journey, a new journey for me, because after we left Charlotte and left the church, we were going to a church in Charlotte for a while, and um, I, I was just struggling. I was struggling with church. I grew up in church. I was a PK grandkid, and um, I watched my mother struggle with church, and and just the you know just watching different leaders and being under different leaders. Um, I served at the chapel on the base for a while under a pastor and his wife, and they were just amazing. They were so loving. Um, they worked through some issues with me with church, 
you know, because I was really disheartened with church, you know, just based on leadership, teaching, you know, it just, it wasn't until somebody talked about grace and grace changed my life. Everything else was always hell and damnation. And it was like, well, I'm probably just going to go to hell in a handbasket. And just over and over watching the different leaders that I served under and I just, I just saw a mess. And that's what brought me to the point of writing this book because after a while, even myself being in management and being over employees and how you treat people and the difference between my treating people, like I, I could get anybody to do anything. But then I had managers that people would talk about. They were disgruntled. You know, they, you know, didn't like coming to work. And it was the same thing with church. You know, people were like, why do we want to come to church? Those people are nasty. They have bad attitudes. And I'm thinking, or the usher at the door, just mean, um, you can't sit here. You need, you, you need to move. This is for the pastors or this is for so-and-so. The Bible said we came to serve. <laughs> Jesus came to serve. And so where's our servant heart? Where's the love? What makes people want to be part of church when you have nastiness in the church? And that's where I was. I had gotten to a point where when I was considered backslid and in, back in the world and doing things that didn't make me happy, my thing was those church people. The people in the world love me better than the people in the church. Mm. And why I want to go to church and I struggled and then finally I went into prayer and a pastor stood in the pulpit and he preached grace and when he preached grace it turned a key that made me understand that my relationship was with God and not people and then people me as a leader had to learn how to love people had to learn how to treat people in the church. And so God had jokes. He put me with children. <laughs> he put me with children. And I have no children. I never wanted children. Never thought about children. I always wanted, you know, to do other things. And God gave me a children's choir, which I could not believe. And it changed my whole life because God taught me one thing. If you can't pastor the children, you can't pastor anyone else. And the journey was amazing. And from there, I wrote, I started journaling. Wow. Kids and the journey with me and the children and how I look. I mean, I, I listened to my children one time. Some kids came to visit our church. And some of my choir kids, they were coming down after they had sang. And the kids said, oh, you director she's really mean and you know and I stopped and you know and it kind of you know stopped me in my tracks because I didn't want the kids to see me and I heard my choir kids say no she's not she is not mean she just cares about our soul and wow cares. <laughs> well out of the mouth of babes well wow, oh wow. the mouth of babies well you know this is a very interesting concept how you correlate um leadership and leaders in the corporate world with leaders and leadership in the in the church. I think mm -hmm. that's a very very um, that's a very astounding correlation that you make because it's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I wonder why our churches are dying, and it's because of exactly what you said. The leaders are not be, are not using good leadership skills, and they're not they're not committed. They're not they. Sometimes they don't have integrity. Sometimes they do, but they just That's are not committed, and they don't, they don't really love they don't really love their flock. So it's it's kind of really interesting. I've never heard it put that way. That's why it's, I just think it's so great for us to talk about where you've been and what your book is and what your book is about. Uh, you tell me in your bio some instances of what pastors uh, have have uh, that you have viewed from pastors and heard from pastors. You say that um, you saw pastors putting others in leadership roles that were killing the flock because of their non-existence of being leaders. So your book would help tremendously with that. But tell us a little bit about that in instance. 
Well, you know, what I found is that a lot of Christians are overexposed and underdeveloped. And so it's basically the pastors trying to fill a spot or those that they put in position, you know, they, you know, they, you know, they give orders, you know, it's like, we need a, we need this, you know, we need somebody on the door and we need somebody in children's church or we need somebody over here in the marriage ministry, but their, their ministry, you know, their marriage themselves is jacked up, but they want to come and tell you how to minister, you know, in your marriage. And so what happens is you get these people, you, you don't, you get these pastors that don't know how to train. They're not educated. Even in my journal, I talk about it. Um, I give two scenarios. You have the one pastor who is constantly going to workshops and constantly trying to better themselves all the time. They're going to conferences or they're getting in school and, you know, they're going to seminary and they're learning the word of God and they're rightfully dividing the word of God and they're sitting under people that can train them. And then you get the one that says, well, I got 50 years life experience. You know, I've seen this, I've seen that, I pray. And, you know, that's good enough. And that's not true. You have to grow. We're in a situation now, we're dealing with millenniums. Millenniums are the weak and the wise. <laughs> yeah, they get out of revelation. They're weak and they're wise. They don't want to hear the fluff. They want to hear the truth. And so if you can't give them, the truth, or you can't be a pastor that says, well, I never drank, or I never smoked, I never fornicated, I never did this, I never did it. Well, then what are you going to tell them? Exactly. Tell them how God delivered you. Really? Well, you know what? As as we are in the environment that we're in now, this um, this idea of training your leaders and giving them training in the church is vitally important because we we are diminishing in numbers because of exactly yes. what you said. These yes. truth seekers, these millennials, they just they just want the truth, and mm -hmm. it's hard enough to teach them about a being that they can't feel or touch because right, right now we're in an environment where we've raised a lot of kids and our kids have raised kids that really uh, don't quite understand the whole concept of, of God and Jesus and grace and everything that, that we learned when we were children in school. So I think it's right. vitally important that we just don't throw people out there in leadership roles in the church. And we wouldn't do that in our business. Think about that. I mean, we don't, we don't, uh, I was in banking all my life, my career, I was a finance person, but imagine me throwing a teller on the teller line to handle a $30,000 cash chore with no training. Mm. You just don't. Right. The same concept. That's why I find it so interesting what you're talking about, and what your book is doing, because you're using biblical principles to teach leadership and the church above all is the one that needs this the most. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Yeah, you also said that you listened to a preacher talk one time about uh, how they weren't li they weren't living, and they just um, you you know they just were there. They they really didn't have a heart for people. So talk a little bit about that one too, because these things seem to have had an impact on you when you were writing your book. Well, you know, I remember one time being in a situation where I heard some pastors talking. I don't think they wanted me to hear that. <laughs> And um, they were, you know, they got up in the pulpit and they preached this message and then they got out of the pulpit and they were talking about the people. And I was like, wait a minute. How you, how do you do that? How do you switch like that? It, 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 it was like two-faced it, you know, yeah. it's, you're grinning in my face, but behind my back, you're talking about me. How do you do that? I don't get that. And really? It, it just, it did something to my heart. It's like, oh my God, you know, how do I trust you? How do I, there's no, for me, we're supposed to show the love of God. And I don't see the love of God right here. You just got here, got your honorary, and it's like a job. <laughs> you came in, you did your job, and you're really not connected to your job. And now you got your money, and now you're gone. And I was just done. Wow. Well, you know, the key word there is money. Mm -hmm. It's all, um, you know, it, it, it's all um, about greed and money and getting bigger and bigger. And uh, it really, 
it really hurts uh, my heart when I see it happening in, um, you know, in neighborhoods really where we should be giving to them, them not giving right. to us. They come right. to church for something. And it's right. so they can they can get help because the the you know the economy is bad or whatever. I know I uh, worked in a I worked in another city for a year and a half uh, managing a credit union that was on the down suite at a mega a mega church, and I would go in on Sunday to, to do my work and you know I'd have my jeans on and my shirt on and and when church time came I would sneak out of the credit union and go into the balcony and sit at the mega church five thousand members. I'd go sit in the balcony and listen to the lesson and go to church and do what I had to do. And then I'd go back to the credit union to work after I got finished. And it was interesting because I'd get, I'd get what I call the side eye, you know, like <laughs> I'd you come into church, not dressed. How right. very, you know, I called it side eyes and I'm like, well, I'm getting a lot of side eyes today. But, you know, I really didn't care. I'm strong enough in my faith to know I'm going to do, do what I have to do. But right. people that aren't like that, I mean, people sometimes don't have the hats and the gloves and the dresses and the suits to wear to church. They just don't anymore. And we have to open up our heart and realize that people have to come as they are. I mean, you know, that's right. And we will receive more blessings if we bless them. So, yeah, but that's just something that's really an interesting uh, concept that you talk about there. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your book. Tell us about your book. What 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 should interest us in it? Do you have a copy of it there? I do. Can you hold it up so we can see it? Well, this see. is the book. Okay. And this is the journal. Okay. It is a self-examination for leaders. Okay. For them to go in and spend time with God and scripture back, for them to just see if if this is them. Because if they don't match up, if it, I mean, I'm not saying my book is the tell-all, perfect-all book, but I do know that if they spend time in it, they're going to know if this is something that they really want to do. Because everybody is a leader, but everybody's not born to want to lead. That's the other thing. And for me with leaders, it's not about just leading people and being the head of something or being able to spew out, you know, orders to everybody. It's about making people equipped to be successful in their walk with Christ, in their walk as leaders and loving each other. Um, it's about also um, getting a better understanding on how to lead. You know, our whole job is to make people successful. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, if you're not, you know, you, I don't know everything. And, I, and I'm not afraid to say I don't know everything. The Bible says every joint supplies. So you got this awesome team. and Everybody's got a mind. Everybody has ideas. You pull them together and you, for a particular uh, task, and you become successful. So when we come together, that's the whole point, to be successful in what we're doing, to be successful in loving the people in the church, to be successful to make people feel the love of God, not the love of self, but the love of God. You know, because like you said, we can't touch God now. You know, he had disciples and they walked with him and still had issues trusting. Now we're in a place that we only can go by faith. We right. can go by the testimony of people that have changed or sometimes people know you from your past and they see how God has changed your life. They got to know it's a God somewhere because if you were, you know, one type of person and now your whole, you know, your whole personality, your whole attitude, the way you treat people, everything has changed. There's got to be a God somewhere. Wow. Well, you know, um, Really, uh, this with a study guide, this could be a study program, not only in churches, but in the corporate world, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, I envision, I envision, and uh, my prayer for you is that this will, this will, um, you know, get, this will get worldwide attention right here, this broadcast. Amen. 
And uh, my prayer for you is that corporations and churches, which are corporations, will pick it up and use it as study guides. I mean, why not use it as a study guide in their leadership training programs? I mean, really. Absolutely. Well, that's the whole purpose that I put it together. The way I put it together, it gives them an opportunity, even though they're journaling and they're responding to the questions and um the different um, uh, Bible scriptures and everything, and they're writing in there how they're feeling, what they're thinking, what their suggestions are, and all this type of stuff. It gives, and then you share. You get in, in an environment where you come back together for like week one, you know, the five developments of leadership, you know, what it is to develop a leader. And then you come back and you share your thoughts about that. Yes, absolutely. That's the whole reason why I put it together. Well, I know part of uh, WYTV7's uh, mantra is if we reach one, we've done a good job, as well right. as we do a lot with financial literacy. So, you know, I, I can uh, also envision that uh, maybe someday we might want to do a leadership training ourselves and maybe have you do that training. And when you might want to think about how you would set up a curriculum to do that, because I, I can envision maybe this be in a, um, a college course too. I don't know about you, but I think big. I, I, I and, was, I, <laughs> and uh, but really uh, with what WYTV7 does in the financial literacy field and in the community, this might really, uh, this might be something that we may want to, we may want to take on too. So, cause I mean, everybody needs to do leadership skills and I love that it's biblical based. That, that's really, that's really great. So. So tell me, um, tell me how God worked you through your challenges. You know, writing the book actually worked me through my challenges. Actually sitting down and writing the book and looking at myself, looking inside was really important. Am I everything or am I striving to be everything that I've put in this book? And the wow. answer. Yes. And I still go back and read my book. And, you know, even with the research to tie it back to biblical, I mean, that that's right there. And I tell everyone I've published a lot of books and I tell everyone that that I uh, that I talk to that's getting ready to write their book and publish their story is that it's right. Great therapy. When you look inside and you start writing, mm -hmm. and God starts flowing those juices through you. It's like it's like no kind of therapy you could ever get. So that's awesome. I totally agree with you there. Uh, do you have a favorite Bible verse, Pastor? Yes, I do. You know, when I was a little girl, um, my grandmother, my grandmother was a great cook, and so am I now. <laughs> I, I used to watch my grandmother when I would go visit her during the summer, and she would have me in the kitchen with my little Bible that had Jesus on it and the little kids. And my favorite verse is Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wow. So every time, you know, when I, even with writing the book, I had to remember the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And so he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And so I kept that um, in my spirit because I needed my shepherd to lead me to make sure that I was putting in this book. It's a small, it's a little book. It's 15 chapters. It's so little. I mean, I've had pastors say, I sat down with a cup of coffee and read this book. Wow. Cup of coffee. But I gone, I went back because I wanted to look at it now. I read it. Now I'm putting it in my spirit. And I'm like, that's awesome. So the Lord was my shepherd. He guided me through this. And that's my Psalms 23. Wow, I love that. I love that. One of my favorites too. So uh, we got to wrap it up because we're running close to our time. But I wanted to just um, just to say uh, one more time that WYTV7 is a nonprofit. And uh, we do take uh, seed money and donations. So if you feel, the, feel moved to, to, and if our viewers feel moved, please donate to WYTV7.org. And also, um, last but not least, can you give us a takeaway for the audience and for the viewers uh, that will really inspire them to leave their mark on the world? Can you kind of give us your, your last parting advice? I would say study 
to show yourself approved. The Bible, that's a biblical principle. Study. Study so those people whose lives you're pouring into, you're pouring good seed. Good seed. Something that they can take away so that they can grow. You know, when you put a seed in the ground, it grows. If you water it and you nurture it. And then the Bible says one waters, one plants, one plants, one waters, and God gives the increase. And so if you're planting in good soil and, you're wa and someone's watering it good, God's going to increase it. Wow, I love that. I love that. Because so many people think now they don't have time to study, but you know, 15, 20 minutes out of a day and just peace and quiet and study is, it, it will just do marvelous. Uh, it's just such great therapy and marvelous uh, help for you. So, well, thank you so much for appearing on my show. I appreciate it. Again, we're Shine Your Light Radio Ministry on WYTV7. And everyone have a great day. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And donate. Donate. We need thank it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that. <laughs> God bless. God bless you. <laughs>